If frustration is a deep chronic sense or state of insecurity and dissatisfaction arising from unresolved problems or unfulfilled needs, as stated elsewhere in this month's newsletter, then grief is a case of frustration on steroids. And if the cause of frustration, as is posited in that article, are our expectations, then the events in Newtown, Connecticut last week bring me to examine my expectations. It's reasonable, we say, that children should be able to go to school safely. Yet 16 children in Dumblain, Scotland, 12 in Columbine, Colorado, and now 20 in Newtown, Connecticut, have had their lives cut short. It's reasonable, we say, that children should be able to be involved in their religious activities, should be taught and nurtured to their version of spirituality. Yet many are now coming forward, having been abused by pedophile priests and rabbis. And scout leaders are routinely outed for their less than ideal leadership of our children. So why are our expectations so high? Events in Newtown ripped that scab off of our knower judger concept that we live in an innocent world, that bad things don't happen to good people, that we are perpetually safe, that there is no risk. We just hate it when the data proves us inaccurate, like last Friday. The young of other species on our planet fare much worse. Lion and bear daddies, for example, routinely eat their young if mom isn't around to protect them, and that's a fact. And even non-Western societies of our species treat their young with mutilation and torture, sell them into sex slavery, and abuse them routinely. And that's a fact. But 20 toe-headed, bright, smiley kids in a school in uber-civilized rural Connecticut, along with some of their staff and teachers, seem somehow over the top. This is simply not supposed to happen in these places. But it does. And that's a fact. Is there anything to be done, short of overreacting and clamping down on everyone's civil rights? You know, remember, one failed shoe bomber is responsible for every air passenger for the last 11 years removing their shoes before boarding. We may just have to live with the risk. Oh yes, life has risk. That's a fact. What's life without any risk? Can we protect our children against every evil? Hide them from it? Do we even want to? If we make all those safety decisions for them, where do they get the practice for later on in life? Stuff happens. That's a fact. Globally, on average, there are 2,000 accidental child deaths every day. Every day. That's a fact. The odds of your child's life being cut short accidentally are 40,000 to 80,000 times more likely than being killed by a wacko. That's a fact. So how can we survive this assault on our expectations with our psyches intact? We grieve out of the magnified frustration that our expectation of a long and wonderful life for our children isn't always met. But we recognize that this outcome has a statistical probability, and that's a fact. In the aftermath of Newtown, many in the media prompted us to hug our kids tighter every Friday night. Well, it, it's too late for 20 sets of parents. I move that we hug our kids tight every night and every morning. And while we're at it, how about our spouses and moms and dads and siblings? Why? Life has risk. Nothing's guaranteed. We can get angry at the new town event, but to what avail? We can seek retribution. This will not reverse this occurrence. We can write new rules to further clamp down on civilization. Really? Or we can accept. Stuff happens. Not everything is preventable. I'm Kim DeMott, corporate co-driver, deeply saddened but accepting the events in Newtown. And this is another moment of clarity.